Donald Trump impeachments. Oh, how many impeachments? We got two there. How many indictments? We got four. How many for Biden? Zero, zero. We're here because of meth. That's what this is about. They can't save Donald Trump. They can't take away the two impeachments and the four indictments, but they can try to put some numbers on the board for Joe Biden. When are you gonna have the vote on impeachment, Mr. Chairman? What are you scared of? Call the vote, come on. If you all think there's so much evidence, we're here, call the vote on impeachment. Impeach him right now, I dare you. A powerful moment there today. Democrats on the House Oversight Committee sharply criticizing the Republican chairman and the majority, uh, which held their first impeachment inquiry uh, inquiry hearing into President Joe Biden. In fact, Republicans tried to argue that Biden has engaged in impeachable offenses. Even their own witness said there is no evidence to support that claim as of now. I want to emphasize what it is that we're here today for. This is a question of an impeachment inquiry. It is not a vote on articles of impeachment. In fact, I do not believe that the current evidence would support articles of impeachment. That was the Republican star witness. Let's bring in Democratic Congressman Jerry Connolly of Virginia and member of the House Oversight Committee. Uh, Mar is also back with us. Congressman, thank you so much for making time for us today. So you were in that hearing today. I was watching it, uh, you know, on TV. But describe for us what was it like for you to, to sit through that and witness what the Republicans were presenting? Well, it's kind of a combination of Alice in Wonderland and a Soviet show trial. Uh, you know, especially Jim Jordan, trying to connect facts that are not connected and trying to uh, take innuendo and make it sign, sound like it's criminal activity. And meanwhile, the backdrop is these guys aren't doing their job and are about to shut down government. And we have prima facie evidence of a real set of alleged criminal activity by a president, but it's not Joe Biden. Um, and just this week, we had a New York judge actually decide that the Trump Organization had engaged in criminal fraud in inflating its value for the purpose of qualifying for financial loans. And as a result, they risk the dismemberment of the Trump Organization in New York State. Um, crickets, not a word about that. Let me play for you, Congressman, a clip that I thought was actually very telling. Not a lot of words, but it speaks for itself. This was when Republicans called a roll call vote. And it appears that, you know, many of them were just absent. They decided not to show up. Watch. This is the motion to table Mr. Raskin's motion. Mr. Jordan. Yes. Mr. Jordan votes aye. Mr. Turner. Mr. Gosar, Ms. Fox, Mr. Grothman, Mr. Palmer, Mr. Higgins. As they're holding this hearing, as we see just two days before a potential devastating government shutdown, and the fact that most Republican members on this committee didn't even bother to show up for the hearing this morning. Do you get the impression, Congressman, that even Republicans may not be considering this impeachment as a priority right now? I think they know it's a sham. I think they know there's no evidence. And remember, McCarthy only agreed against his own a longstanding policy that it requires a, a vote of the full House to direct an inquiry of impeachment as an appeasement to the far right in the hopes that by agreeing to that, he would get their votes on the appropriations bills and on some kind of short-term funding of the federal government. Um, and so this is trying to buy them off. It's not a serious inquiry as to any kind of action by the president that could even conceivably fall within the category of high crimes and misdemeanors. I thought one of the more telling moments of the hearing was uh, when you were posing these questions kind of rhetorically, perhaps a little sarcastically asking uh, one of the experts to comment about what would happen if the son-in-law of the president was working as the chief diplomat on Middle East peace, but also taking in uh, millions of dollars of business deals once he leaves office. Would that be something that would be worth an impeachable investigation? And it seemed 
Um, most of the Republicans did not make the connection that you were trying to suggest, which is if there was a serious accountability pursuit, it would be for Donald Trump and his family and what they did while they were in the White House, not what something happened with Joe Biden and Exa his son. Exactly. Every category they brought up. Branding. Oh, you want branding? Let's talk about towers all over the world right. that, that immediately created a conflict of interest if you became president of the United States. For, follow the foreign money. Well, Jared Kushner, days after leaving the White House with the Mid, uh, Mideast portfolio, got $2 billion loan or financing from the Saudi crown prince. Uh, I mean, on and on, they're projecting. The problem isn't Joe Biden, and there's no evidence to suggest personally he's been involved at all, but there is plenty of evidence to tell us about the sorry trail of the alleged criminal activity involving Donald Trump. Congressman uh, Jerry Connolly, sir, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much for your My time pleasure. today. Thank you, Babin. So, Mar, let's talk about how Democrats react to this. And obviously, we, we got some of that today in the hearing. We just heard some of it from Jerry Connolly. But when you have Republicans trying to put on this theatrical farce um, and they want to consume the energy both in Congress and the attention of the nation, when we are facing a looming shutdown just a couple of hours away, a couple of days away, how do Democrats respond to that moment? How do they not get sucked into this petty game that the Republicans are trying to play and keep the ball focused on what's at stake? Well, I think we saw a little bit of it, which is you start telling the actual story of what really is going on, which is that you have somebody running for president, the front runner in the Republican Party, who is a threat to democracy and who has uh, been in indicted and who has a series of allegations against him that are quite serious, of which there is mounting evidence. Um, and so there, there is some of that being done. But I think this is a special moment and, and a scary one uh, for many families and federal employees and many other Americans because we do have a looming federal government shutdown. The thing that's kind of mystifying about the behavior of the Republicans in Congress, this impeachment inquiry, is they know full well that government shutdowns actually don't help them. I, I think Americans are savvy enough. They probably that the Republicans will be blamed for that. And so one of the things that the Democrats, you know, should be, would think, looking to do is start really pointing out that while there is a sham uh, hearing going on right now, um, at the same time, you have military members that may not get paid. The air, uh, the air traffic controllers who won't yeah. be able to go to work, the TSA workers, um, you know, uh, the Border Patrol, okay, at the time when we have a crisis... Yeah. Um, and so I don't think that's what Americans are looking to Washington for in this moment from any political party. And I don't think that there's really any kind of sham inquiry that is going to save uh, Republicans at this point from being held responsible for shutting down the government if that's what comes to pass. And I really hope that's not what comes to pass. I hope cooler heads will prevail because that's the last thing this country needs right now.